changes over time. What was it like to be part of such a history-making occasion? Um, pretty amazing. I'd, I'll never play in front of that many people again. Um, but the buzz was like the grand final buzz of that unknown and um, we didn't know how many people were there. You know, you see on Facebook, or oh, maybe 5,000 people are attending. You think, oh, that's great, because it was meant to be at um, Collingwood's home ground, which holds about 3,000 people. So, um, and then you start to see everyone come through, and it was just that perfect night, and it was just, we didn't know what to expect. You know, the first game, we've trained this whole time, we don't know what Collingwood are doing, we don't know what anyone else is doing. Um, you know, you, you kind of know how to play football, but you don't really, it's AFLW. So it, it was just sort of surreal in a way. And then when you think back of it, I still get the, the goosebumps and the tingles and it just something that I'll never experience again. And I'm really privileged to have been able to do that. So it's really, because I don't think the, the league wasn't meant to start till 2019. So, and by that stage, I could well be done. So that's good. <laughs> An amazing career here at the Rangers and in the WNBL. We'll get to that in just a moment. But how did the opportunity present itself to play footy? Um, well, I was playing footy in the winter, just for a bit of fun, a bit of a release from basketball because I'd done it for so long. Um, and then it's uh, you know the the talk of it coming along, and I thought, well, you know, I'm not too bad at this. I do all right. So. Um, I, I actually spoke to Larissa about it and, you know, we were, I was going to come around again and, and play WBL but I'd come off a couple of calf injuries and the way that training started was going through the day which doesn't suit me with work and unfortunately back then we didn't get paid enough to, for me to say quit my job and, and that's it. And I'm getting to the end of my career so I didn't want to jeopardise any of that. So um, then, the, you know, the talk of the draft and I thought, look, I'll give it a crack put my name in there and I got drafted. So it was all a little bit, just sort of fell into place for me. And, um, you know, I really enjoyed the change. I, I miss basketball, but um, at the same time, I love football. Would you please thank Alison Downey. Well, Nat, I'd like to say long time no see, but we uh, we did a gig earlier today, so I'm, do we go over the same stick? Or? At least you changed. Yeah. I did, I changed outfits, how about that? Somebody has a day job. <laughs> we'll move on. Um, you were up early uh, the other night, like most of us were watching the Opals. Um, terrific performance to take home silver at the FIBA World Championships in Spain. As a former Opal, um, what was that like to, to watch them win silver? Uh, well, it was, it was awesome. Um, I spoke, there was a few people here that sort of spoke, to, uh, heard me speak this morning, but today, um, it's tired, it's been a long day. I've been, <laughs> these 5 a.m. starts, plus I'm trying to work out at the moment, so yeah, I apologise for my mumbled words at 9 o'clock at night when I'm usually in bed. Um, anyway, the Opals were wonderful. Um, I said today, I love to, I love seeing the fact that when I used to watch Opals when I was a kid, they played with such tenacity, and they were fierce, and they were tough, and they were together. And then when I was in the program, it was exactly the same thing. It was the same culture. It was about that, being resilient, all of those types of things. And just watching those games um, over the last 10 days, I saw all of those really admirable characteristics and the reason why it makes the Opal such a wonderful program. So um, they were brilliant. They, they really were superb. And I um, loved how they went hard at Spain. You know, they got feisty and they got fired up and, you know, really uh, took it to that and then... You know, just it's the cream cream on top winning that silver medal. I mean, everybody wants a gold, but to finish second in the, in the world is it's insane. It's, it's a good feeling. And six Victorians in that side. One yeah. one from Downing on the course, which was a, an amazing effort. So we love to see the Vicks in there doing well. Um, you have played your WNBL career across a couple of clubs. That tell us. Were you giggling? That's kind. <laughs> a couple, maybe a few. Journey woman. <laughs> um, Great, great career, great stint at the Rangers. What stands out about Dandenong compared to some of those other clubs you represented? Well, I mean, Dandenong always holds a very special place in my heart. It's where I started my WNBL career as a little 16-year-old. Are any of you young girls 16? Put your hand up. 17, 18, 15, 14, 19. How old are you guys? Oh, up the back there. Very good. Um, so for a 16-year-old, um, I remember my mum's here. And she used to drive me up to the Monash uh, for training at a six o'clock start and then 
your little big sister, used to let me drive home on my L's, without displaying L plates, mind you. Um, and uh, I, and I used to drive Ellie Douglas's uh, yellow Volvo <laughs> all the way back to Camberwell, and she went on to Eltham. I mean, she went on to Eltham. I, I mean, the girls were awesome. And so, standing on to me um, holds really fantastic memories, because it wasn't a job then. Um, it was me just playing basketball, the sport I love, with Jess Bibby and we were being, you know, little superstars on ABC playing against Michelle Timms and, um, yeah, we thought we were pretty funny, but... So for me, Dan and I will always hold, you know, the most special part of my WNBL career, for sure. Uh, would you please thank Opal, silver medalist, and uh, WNBL league and thank you. Jacinta Kennedy, mum ahead. <laughs> You've got itchy feet, haven't you? Coming along to the launch, you're kind of feeling like you might want to make a comeback, aren't you? I would love to get back out on the court, but I think I'd probably make it up and down once or twice before I um, doubled over and took a few deep breaths. I play social netball on Monday nights now. <laughs> Good luck to the opposition. <laughs> yeah, Cop and Zin only, uh, Monday night netball. You know what? They're brutal, the netball players. That's why I always... I played basketball and netball till I was about under 14s, under 16s. And then mum, I'm the youngest of seven, mum could not get me to both trainings anymore, so I had to choose. And I chose basketball because at least with basketball, you're hitting someone and you own it. You're going to hit them. They know you're going to hit them. We all know. We're all shot. You know, you're overt about it. But in netball, they hit you just as hard, but they try to do it without anyone seeing and it kills me. <laughs> it really me. But I'm getting better at it, so... God love you, Sido. Um, now, I was going to say, you've probably got more time on your hands now you're not playing elite level um, basketball in this country, but you've got a couple of kids and a lot of balls in the air. Yeah. How's it all going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, life is good. Life is really busy. Um, as I was finishing the last WNBL season that we played, we were in the grand final series against Sydney, which unfortunately we lost um, in the three game series. And about two weeks prior to the end of that season, um, I started study again. So I am now um, three assignments away from finish, finishing my Masters of Teaching, which is really exciting. Um, so I've been busy doing that um, and just finishing my final five-week placement in a primary school um, close to home. So that's been um, very challenging, but also really, really enjoyable and definitely, aside from the basketball court, um, where I've always wanted to be. Um, and yes, I've got three young children um, who are very active and into their sport, so following them around and getting them to where they need to be, that definitely keeps myself and my husband very busy. Have we got some mother-daughter rural recruits coming through? <laughs> Larissa is always looking, looking ahead for yeah. <laughs> new um, young talent. Yeah, I'm sure, but they definitely, they love their basketball. They do also enjoy their netball, but um, yeah. They love their basketball and we'll keep it that way. Um, but um, yeah, I think I'm spending just as much time, if not more, in basketball stadiums, um, watching them, coaching them, doing all of the, the mum stuff, which is, um, yeah, diff different side of the sport, but, um, but just as enjoyable. But I can, I mean, everyone's touching on it. Um, the WBL being back on TV, um, the Fox deal with the Opals games and all of that. And I just, seeing it from the other side as a parent, and having the young, the young girls and our little boy as well, having these girls who are the stars of the show, I feel funny sitting up on the stage because you guys are the stars, these amazing athletes, these amazing role models and having access to them on our TV screens and, um, and in the stadiums every week, it's just incredible and it's so very important for our young people um, and for the community, I mean, for Daniel and Sally, I'm gonna single you out because I read your, the article that um, was on the internet, I think it was last week, and it was spot on. You guys are just the most fantastic product. We're not like men, we're not trying to be like men. We're ourselves and we, you know, you guys are amazing and for females to have role models like you out there is just the best thing. And I mean, all of you guys that are supporting Dandenong and the sport, you're on a good thing. And I just, it's gonna grow. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's an amazing job. I was so impressed. Amen, <laughs> sister. Yeah. Sino's just wrapped, wrapped it up. Round of applause for Sino. <laughs> <laughs>